Hey guys, I'm Sifu Dong. I hope you're staying safe and healthy in these challenging times. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're returning and you've seen a couple of my videos, welcome back and thanks for sticking around. Recently, I've had an injury that prevented me from doing some filming, but nevertheless, we're back. And today we're actually talking about weaponry, more specifically the traditional use of weapons and also the nature on how they're used. So hopefully this information will help you with your own forms training, may help you in tournaments, but just give you an overall better understanding of how these weapons are used and what's gonna be best practice. So without further ado, let's get to work. All right, so let me start off by saying today we're working with these weapons in the traditional sense of the art. Now, we say traditional because, of course, you can't carry a sword, a spear, those type of things with you on a daily basis to solve your problems. You can, but you'll probably get in a little trouble. But the idea of traditional usage of these weapons is also understanding how to use them with your body. Now, we say that weapons are extensions off of our body. So it's really important to have that correlation between how the weapon is used and how the body is used together in harmony with it. So we're gonna be exploring that today to make sure that you get a better sense of the weapon itself. Now, a lot of the things that we're gonna be going over are stuff that I've ran through, through my years of teaching, through actually competition, competitions I've actually participated in, as well as judged and uh, things that drive me crazy. I'll tell you one thing, I have uh, I competed one time at a tournament and the guy I was competing against had a double broadsword or double sabers and the form looked great, he was flashy, however his blades were all over the place, the edge of the blade was all over the place and he finished the form and one of the finishing moves that he had was moving on the floor and he literally sat on his sword and the edge blade was up which means you let that sword hit you where the good Lord split you and you probably would have killed yourself if that was a real sword. So the idea of understanding and using these weapons in a traditional sense is very important, but it also teaches you a lot about your own training. So let's get to it. All right, first up is the traditional broadsword, also known as the Tan Tao. Now this weapon right here was said to be the more popular one of the Chinese military foot soldiers especially. But it's popularity because it was easy to learn. It was relatively easy to use. This is a single edge sword where we have the blade edge on one side, we have a dull edge on the other side. So of course, being a training weapon right now, it's uh, not sharp, but traditionally it was. So this weapon was used for hacking, slashing, cutting, slicing. It was, uh, it was a nasty weapon. Now the back edge was used for, of course, blocking in positions of that sort. Now, the other portion is the hilt, or some people refer to as the blood cup, where the blood would run down, so that way the blood didn't get on the hand, making it sticky or slippery. The tassel on the back end is now, nowadays used more for decoration, but also said traditionally was to wrap around the wrist to make sure that you didn't lose the weapon as well. Okay, now the first drill we're gonna be working on with this broadsword is gonna be a basic upward flower. So the two basic motions we have are gonna come up this way. We refer to this as Lao, and it's gonna circle around and it comes upward into Nong. So it comes up and it circles around and it comes up. One of the things that we're focusing on, again, is that blade edge. We want it to cut. So it's gonna be coming up and up circle around and up. Now, more importantly is also how we utilize our body in this drill. So as this comes up, our torso lifts. Now, when we get to this position, we're looking at that blade edge, we're turning the waist so that way this comes straight up. Now, we're again, we're working with the basic nature of the weapon because it comes up and it's a heavier weapon, it's gonna wanna come down. So as it comes down, all we're doing is we're utilizing the waist to guide it over to the other side. Again, it comes up, it rolls, it comes down. So it's up and down, up and down. Now, one of the most important things also on this drill is how you grip your sword. If you grip it really tight, your hands are gonna fatigue after a while. So when we do this, especially if you're doing it for tournaments or training, we wanna keep those wrists nice and loose. We wanna keep the grip where it has intention, but we don't wanna be tense. So when we do this, typically I say the thumb and the first finger come right around where the hilt is. The other fingers will be there to support, but it's not gripping too tight. Now, as we do this and we cut up, 
one of the things that we're looking at, again, is that blade edge to make sure that it's cutting on this plane. So it cuts up and it cuts up. So that blade is always facing. Now, part of that is turning of your waist. Turn, part of that is relaxing that wrist. So if you want it to go faster, you actually turn your waist and relax the wrist. You hold on to it enough where it's not gonna fly out of your hand, but you wanna make sure that it's not coming over and having that flat edge right there. Otherwise, it's like you're spanking somebody with your sword, which you, you can't do if that's your intention, but it's uh, not really recommended. So again, what we're looking at again is that upward cutting position. You wanna relax that waist, relax. So relaxation is one of the key things. This allows it to move with the body. This allows you, and all you're really doing is just guiding that energy. All right, you're guiding the energy around. Now, as you come over to the right side, it can be a little bit trickier, but really what you wanna do is just take your time. Take your time and explore how it feels with your own body and how the motion is actually executed. All right, so next up is the gim or the straight sword, also known as the jian. Now, with this type of sword, it has a little different nature to it, of course, when we're looking at a broad sword, we have one big sharp side and we have the other dull side. Now, with the gim, it actually has said that only the first handful of inches were actually sharp, which means you actually had to be very precise in where you cut, how you cut. And that's why a lot of times those cuts were made to main tendons, arteries, so that would cause the prone to be disabled or bleed out. Now, what we're gonna be doing is we're actually gonna be taking the same exact motion that we did with the broadsword and we're gonna apply it to the game as well. So with this one, it's a little different as it comes up. It comes up and it draws before it rolls over. Now again, we turn the waist, it comes up and it draws back before the tip kind of comes over. Now, same thing, we wanna make sure that we're really staying on those same planes. We wanna make sure that blade is up and down and we come all the way around. So we don't want it to flop over, we wanna make sure that we're still cutting on those planes. So we come up and we draw, we come up and we draw. Now, typically in a sword form uh, with the gim, you may not have a lot of flowering positions like this. A lot of times it's actually done in succession where you may come one, draw up and in. So you have a little bit different motion, a little bit more motion with this. And a lot of that is dictated through how your body is moving well. So the body moves to the sword, not necessarily the sword to the body. And we're going to explore a little bit more with that one on the next part. Now, is as much fun as it is to talk about the tradition and history of some of these weapons and how they used to be used, you really got to think about what could be. And nothing really intrigues me more than the lightsaber. Now, the beautiful thing about the lightsaber is it pretty much has everything that the broadsword has as well as the straight sword. It has the hacking, slashing, cutting motions of the broadsword and the elements of the gim. Now with that, because there is no backside or front side, the whole blade is a cutting blade and that's what makes it fun. Now because they're so similar, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and show you the application, traditional application, with the same scenario just with a different weapon. So let's take a look at it. So when we're talking about the application of this basic flower, whether you're doing it with the broadsword, the straight sword, or the lightsaber, it comes down to two movements, the lao and the nao. All right, so with the broadsword, of course, like we said before, this is meant for hacking, slashing, chopping. So we're gonna have some pretty big cuts. So to start us off with this, we're gonna be standing out from this position and of course we want to get off that center line now if we use it in two positions we have the lao which is that uppercut and the nong which is the other side of the uppercut and it's going to form kind of a v or an x so as we step off to the center line from here we can use the lao to block okay deflecting upwards and then we follow up stepping forward with the nong which will give us a nice cut 
uh, usually up to the upper region of the body, arms, so forth. Now we can also do it in just the opposite, where we actually attack with the nong first and then follow with the lao for the cut. So in this position from here, we would block up with the nong and then from here come up through with the lao and then that will be our attack. Okay, now for the gim or the straight sword, it's pretty much the same thing. It's very similar. The only difference is that because we have a little different edge and area where we're cutting with, we have to alter our targeted areas as well. So from this position, as we stand from here, we're going to go ahead. We're going to start with the same thing. We'll step out and we're going to do our first cut with the lao. Okay. From here, we will roll in and come through with the nong. And of course, it works the same way if we switch them around. So from this position, we start off as we start with the nong, and then we step and we finish with the lao. Okay, last but not least, we did not forget about our lightsaber. Now, again, the beautiful thing about this is it is like a combination of the broadsword and also the straight sword, which is similar to almost like the Japanese katana as well. So nothing really changes. We're still going to be using the same two techniques, which is the lao and the nong. So as we get to it, All right, so first we're going to go ahead and step off that center line and we have our nong to block and then we will step to the opposite side coming through with our lao. So again, we're going to start by stepping off that center line, come across and lao and then stepping forward, in, and on. Well, I hope you enjoyed our little journey down the traditional as well as the non-traditional and learned a little something, but most importantly, just had some fun with it. Hopefully this also exercise helps you with what you work on in your own style and how you work with your own weaponry as well. So play with it, have fun with it, until next time, I'll see you on the next one.